well, well, well. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a very, actually late Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. Sleep was not too much had last night, but we have plenty to talk about with some new Bitcoin action. And as always, it is Sunday, so we will be talking about some more long-term ideas. So let's waste no more time. As always, want to be wishing you well. Want to be wishing you the happiest of the happiest, the best of the best on this very sacred, sacrificial Sunday as you pray to perhaps even go Jesus himself. So let's get on over here to the good old live scene. And Bitcoin has actually done something that it hasn't done in well, quite some time. It has made a higher high on the daily and also taken out the daily cyan 89 exponential over here that we've been looking at. So overall, we have seen the continuation that we spoke about yesterday. If this uh, if this were to be, I suppose, triggered, which it certainly was. Um, now what happens? Well, because it is a Sunday and because we are coming up on some major, major, major macro areas, I do want to start off with actually looking at the higher time frame. So let's go to the let's go to the weekly right over here. The weekly, and we have to go to Bitstamp so we can actually have uh, some price action history, but we're actually living above the 200 exponential moving average right now. Now, of course, when it comes to judging the macro and changing around the macro, what I really want to see is I want to see the 200 exponential be both opened and closed above if this is going to actually change. Now, of course, would that be the final frontier for the bears or sorry, or the bulls or, or the bearish market, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, by the way, my quota now, so free hands. Great. Uh, anyways. Um, would that be the final frontier? Technically, no, but it would certainly change around my overall tone. That's for sure. Now you can see over here, you know, if, if Bitcoin does close above this on this weekly, it will have a chance to both open and close above next week, which would be the which would be the first time since this more aggressive downtrend over here. And that, to me, like I said, would drastically change my overall tone in the market. I'd probably be looking for a move into the high four thousand. That would happen tentatively speaking about forty nine hundred. I'd imagine um, forty five hundred be very very likely if that were to happen uh, basically just test this yellow 21 exponential moving average right here but of course as you can see bitcoin each and every time that it's actually gone around this area for the last uh three months yeah ever since uh late november so it's been quite some time uh this has been the impetus for resistance but we have made a higher high and now with the fucking now i'm gonna look silly because <laughs> all the people looking at this fractal over here it's gonna actually start to look a little bit more likely especially as we do get closer and closer to that yellow 21 exponential anyways <laughs> before without getting into that i can actually get to it through some more traditional venues which at the end of the day it's like who cares which venue that you get to it if it actually does happen then that's you know then that's then that's the way to go for it anyways um overall on the weekly right here that's what I want to be cognizant of. We do have our weekly Stokes uh, fresh cross up and gaining significant momentum to the upside. That would be a nice signal. Uh, weekly RSI also finding support along the uh, along the exponential uh, last week, or I think this was two weeks ago, um, down on our current bottom right here at about 3,400 and seeing continuation off that. But overall, again, I'm very, very curious where the weekly does close. That is my next big trigger. If we close above, I'm probably looking for a, I'm probably looking for a move to the 21 exponential, but I don't immediately declare that the bear market's over. What I look for, and sorry, the 21 exponential would be all the way at 45, yeah, about 4,500. But I, I don't necessarily declare that the bear market's over. I wouldn't even declare the bear market's over if we both open and close above it. It's just I would drastically change my tune and probably look for a run into the high 4,000s and then reassess from there. But for now, that's tentatively what I'm thinking. Um, and let's now go down into, I believe it was the two-day dollar time frame. Yes, it was. We are also brushing up against the green 55 exponential moving average right here. And again, this is just doing nothing else other than looking at moving averages. And you can see this guy has governed our, our, our actually, we did set another two-day dollar in stone last night, did govern that high. We had another wake up above this morning and rejected so far all the way to 41.90. But, 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 of course, same thing here. I need to see both open and close above. If that were to happen, then, you know, the, uh, then then that run to 4,500 looks extremely likely. Now let's actually go over here to spot uh, BitMexico. And uh, let's put on the drawing tools. Uh, we have a clean we have a clean and clear breakout out of this area right here. Where's our next horizontal resistance? Well, actually, we have a very obvious one right here now, don't we? Uh, just from this prior swing high, wick, wick. One, two, three, three times makes a trend as the saying goes. I do like that. I'm gonna start to clean up some of these guys. By the way, this symmetrical triangle right over here, that the measure move on that, that was pointing actually a little bit lower than our current low is now nullified as we are living above it. And yes, that certainly indeed can happen. And we are basically, or we will get this, this very powerful uh, exponential moving average cross on the daily. 
barring any sort of major like five hundred dollar dump by end of day, but I don't think that I don't think that's gonna happen. To be, I don't think I'm saying anything crazy here. It's probably not gonna happen. Probably gonna get this cross, and uh, and I would be looking for you know a little bit more movement on top of that. Let's actually go back in time and see what that cross has produced during this whole downwards market. The last time that we actually got this cross was well for a second here. However, this was obviously a bull trap. Time and you perfectly the <laughs> literally timed you the perfect actual top uh, funnily enough this time over here t uh, basically getting you this consolidation which is kind of more reminiscent of what we're doing right now and then getting another leg up and then it's getting sold into and that's kind of what I'm gonna present coming coming up next is that you got the same cross right over here consolidation next leg up gets sold into then we have do we have a cross before that um I think yeah I think that was the last time that we actually even had that cross before or, yeah, uh, oh, over here was, a, you know, it took you all the way probably from about 4,000 to uh, 13,000 13, on the upside. So again, check that out. And overall, I am, you know, that is something that I do have in my mind's eye because when we do go over to the four hour dildo time frame as well, which was the impetus for not wanting to be short earlier this week, uh, coming into this week on February 17th, right here, the green 55 and the purple 200 exponential moving average. Uh, this move has already produced now a almost 20% gain, about a little under 18% if you want to be super exact over the course of about seven days, we could say seven days. So let's actually go back in time and look at how the four hour dildo, dildo golden cross has been played in the history of Bitcoin over the last year year during this downwards market and the last time that we actually have an example of this was right over here it's gonna be a little bit of a uh, little bit redundant for the people who have been watching for the last few days but there will be some new stuff don't worry about that uh, nine and a half percent from bottom to top from cross to to red dildo party in about six days a little bit under six days uh, so that was a weaker one for sure and we also saw that with kind of the, the the daily cross as well here's a very powerful one over here that we saw which took about uh, almost four or sorry almost two weeks and got about 26 percent this is kind of a little bit what more what i'm looking for we have more of a similar setup um towards this than we did um uh, then, uh, then we did the last example is what I'm trying to say. And you also saw that with the daily as well. Um, and this is also why yesterday I was kind of saying I am looking for another leg. Uh, then we had the last time before that was right here. Another, uh, you know, 22% gain before the red dildo party begins and done over the course of about 16, 17 days, we could say. Uh, so again, you know, I just want to gauge the relative strength of this. And and uh, the last example that we have is right here where, again, a little bit of more of a weaker one, about 13% from bottom to top about five days in its uh, in its total in its totality so to kind of compare that with what we're doing right now this is certainly a very powerful one and i'd certainly you know have it more akin to this guy right over here in fact if we go back to the daily you'll notice that the last time that the daily rsi has even gotten this high was right here on that same run to eight thousand. that's that's exactly the area that i'm pointing to right here um same thing with the jewel jewel showing the, a very similar signature actually we are higher on the jewel and the jewel huh, this is the second highest the jewel has been on the daily since December 2017, you know, 20,000. Um, so again, what am I trying to present now is that I am looking for that next local top. Where does that next local top come in around? Well, that's the next question because it was very obviously not this 89 exponential here, which we kind of had a hunkering, hunkering down for yesterday. Um, but I think very obviously, you know, this whole cluster right here makes it difficult. We have resistance pretty much all the way from where we are right now at that 4150 level, as we saw with the two day 55 exponential at the 4110 level with, oh, and I just got filled on my, that was my main account. Actually, uh, I'm trading that on my other screen over here. Um, I did just take a scalp short and I'll show what I'm thinking in just a second. But that was also the weekly 200 exponential, which I, which is one of the reasons why I took this trade because overall by end of week what i'm looking for or end of week meaning tonight at, at uh, 7 p.m eastern time i am looking for this to probably come back and have a go at the 200 exponential if this trade is going to work out again probably going to end up to be more of a scalp i'm in no rush to get the directional trade on but like we've been preparing for for the last uh, week or maybe not not we but this is not financial advice not a financial advisor but just kind of sharing my thoughts like I've been preparing for it for the last week, uh, I do want to be cognizant of that next local high, but also understand that it's gonna take some time. And if and if and when we do put in the high, it's gonna likely 
grind that area for a little bit of time. That is how Bitcoin has played out its last few highs. Uh, if you'll notice this area right here, spending you know about four or five days at the top, this area right here, spending you know a week and a half at the top, this area right here, I mean, done, done over the course of a couple of weeks, if you want to call that a double top, and then obviously our ultimate high over here, done over the course of a few days. So it's no, I'm in no real rush to get in the directional trade, but I, I, I am happy to scalp. So let's actually go down to the lower timeframes and talk about what I'm seeing right here. And basically we do have some bearish divergence on the hourly dildo time timeframe right here. Uh, we do have our hourly stokes crossing down for the first time in, well, well, since yesterday, actually, but <laughs> that one didn't turn out too well, no, didn't it? Uh, hourly jewel is not a sell. It's it, That would be a very weak signal. I would not take this signal. It is not, I would not consider that a signal. Um, or I, I only like the perfect signals on that guy. And then I think also the two hour is, the two hour is actually not presenting any bearish divergence funnily enough unless until you pull it out all the way over here and you realize that yes we are signaling some divergence between this level and in fact we could be doing something like this doing something like this where we're essentially making a bro an ascending broadening wedge so let me actually get rid of some of the uh trend lines that we had in there yesterday i want to keep in this guy but yeah this is our breakout trend line and yeah we're doing something like this but still respecting this area as resistance now perhaps if we go to the four hour it'll make a little bit more sense something like that you can see that these wicks are coming and coming in the same area so we do have some sell pressure around there but that also means that if we take out the current high at 41.90 i want out of this trade I've, i want nothing to do with it i'm looking for probably somewhere down around uh you know a little under 4100 i'd imagine um, so again, a uh, four hour jewel is, uh, I don't like this setup right here. I don't like it when it's green. It's not, it's not, I don't consider that. A, I don't consider that a, a signal, but four hour RSI, you know, if we do put, if we do confirm a local top here, which is not confirmed, it's not confirmed at all. In fact, we do have the four hour stoke still going up, but if we do confirm a lower high right here, or sorry, a, um, a local high, then we will, then we will have to play out some divergence as, uh, as you're likely seeing right there, a lot of uh, space to go. What about the eight hour? I think the eight hour is still kind of giving you the same, you know, the same signature, right? So this area, this next few hours is pretty damn critical because if Bitcoin actually does start to respect this area as resistance, this 4150 area as resistance and create a local high here, then the divergence bots are likely going to start to take over. And that's, you know, that's likely going to lead to, <laughs> it's a little bit of a pullback. So again, uh, 10 hour, I mean, all of our, all of our medium to high time from Stokes are actually up right now. Uh, six hour, that was your 10 hour. This is your six hour, both going up 12 hour, both going up daily is never crossed down daily hasn't crossed down. And again, daily is now officially right where it was on the last few highs on the last two highs. Obviously it did get higher in, in, uh, in May of last year, um, on the run to 10,000. And of course in February as well, at the, uh, at the double top at, uh, 12, uh, 12,000, I believe it was anyways. Um, so those are the things that I'm looking for. And that's essentially what I have on my mind. Uh, you know, half hour, 30 minute dildo chart right over here, you know, looks like it wants to come down a little bit to me. Um, maybe a little bit of a pullback test this area, ground this area a little bit more, but, uh, you know, you could even kind of fit the same sort of formation in this area. In fact, if you are a very short time frame trader, which again, I'm not, you know, I'm not, not necessarily suggesting to do this. It's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but we do have something like this kind of form. You do see volume tailing off. You do see your 30 minute stow starting to get faded. You do see some 30 minute uh, RSI divergence. So, you know, a test back down to the lower end of the 4,100 range, not a question or anything like that. Um, anyways, I, so we've talked about why where <laughs> we talked about yesterday and the, and the few days before of how this was likely to probably get another leg work higher but overall my feeling is i'm looking for that next reversal point kind of like exactly what we saw you know in the pa on the past tops of this year like this area right here this area right here and this area right here and obviously our prior high which we do have a lot of similar markings of in fact i'm going to bring out one more thing in confluence with again the four hour double time frame and the two day uh let's actually go back to the two day or was it the two day or the three day? No, it's a three day. Let's go back to the three day over here. Uh, three day dildo time frame closed our first our first girthy dildo above the yellow 20 minute exponential for the first time in a very long time, actually ever since uh, September. So almost half a year, almost half a fucking year. But here's the thing is that each and every time that we've actually closed above this uh, this 20 minute exponential moving average, it 
hasn't been too long after that where the red dildo party began. So again, putting it in the back of my mind, look, be on the lookout for that sort of activity. We do have some nasty exponential moving average crosses coming in right here between the green and the and the, and the blue. Um, and going back into time, the last few times that we've actually gotten above this area, it hasn't ended too, all too well. In fact, it does call the more... It, I think it's actually a little bit more accurate than uh, than our other tools in kind of getting that last drive of the uh, of the run. I mean, this was the last time over here in uh, September run from 7,400 to 6,000. The time before that was your late July, early August dump from 8,400 to 6,000 right here. The time before that was, got it just about perfectly um, from uh, from 10,000 down to 6,000. And the time before that, getting the double top again, once again, perfectly over here, uh, 12,000 to 6,000. And so my point is, and what I'm trying to get out over here is that it's actually not, while, while I will be looking for that trade on the next local high, there's not too much pressure on getting a trade like this off. And what I mean by that is more importantly, and the more safe trade that, that I'm looking at over here is that each and every time that we get above it and then come back down, that first stab back down, that first dildo closure back down below actually does have complete follow through back down to the range lows. So what would that mean for this area? I mean, that would mean, you know, it's actually rapidly rising, but it's going to be coming up to about 39.50 out of margin on the next tick. So if and when that gets taken out, that would be my more, uh, that'd be my more con concrete sign to say, hey, be aware, be aware of, of, uh, of, of the history right now. Now, of course, just because it happened in the past, does that mean it's going to happen in the future? No, but it works until it doesn't work. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's one of the beautiful things my mentors say, very, very frustrating at first, but very true in retrospection. Um, anyways, I also do want to bring out that the CMEs closed Friday at 39.35. Now, again, there's going to be a massive gap, uh, assuming assuming that Bitcoin's you know still above 41.50 by end of day, uh, between where they closed on Friday and when they're going to open up later tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Now, that gap, if and, and if you're not familiar with gaps, each and every gap in the history of the, of the traditional markets that I'm aware of that I've seen that I can verify has been filled. Sometimes they take years. I mean, these are, you know, for stocks that have been around for 20, 30, 40 years, uh, but they get filled. Bitcoin is about to print a massive, massive gap around this. Uh, basically, we could call it 4,000. We could call it about 4,000. So at some point in time, I would be looking for this area to be retested. So that is also why I am looking at the very least for a scalp relatively soon. And we do see, funnily enough, that <laughs> lining up with this next level, by the way, that the 89 exponential on CME futures is right around 4,300, actually. I just, I'm just noticing this. Uh, I want to redo... I want to actually, oh, this is actually kind of a clean chart. Beautiful. Um, let's do it some like here. We got boom, boom, uh, wick, wick, uh, body. Okay, good. Line up with that. I like that. Something like that in a range. Uh, do you want to, do you want to include, include the lower body as well? So something like this is what I'd be looking for about the two, the 4250 range to 4350, the next kind of cleft of resistance. So I'm trying to, so what I'm doing is I'm plotting out plotting out areas of potential trades, uh, looking for that next potential uh, potential local high because I will be looking for price action to return back and fill this gap here at some point. Again, remember the timing on that, highly fucking variable. I mean, it could, I, it's, I don't think it, I don't think it happens on open. I don't even think it happens this next week. Um, I think it's, I think if it's going to happen, it probably happens, you know, a little bit, a little bit further out, or at least I don't want to have that sort of uh, filter going through my brain. I want to be more agnostic when looking at price action right now. Let's go over to the 12 hour. Uh, I do want to present the 12 hour just really quickly as well, because Hey, what's some, some doesn't look right here on the 12 hour. Hmm. Hold on. What is, oh, that's because we're looking at CMEs. Here we go. Okay, yeah, this is BitMexico right here. The pink, the pink moving average is our 200 sim simple moving average. It is kind of another thing in the same vein as a two day, uh, as a two day, tw or sorry, the three day uh, 21 exponential moving average that we looked at, kind of calling, telling you that, that the parabolic move is getting a little bit more, or sorry, not the parabolic move, but like, kind of like our local top is likely to get set in place relatively soon. Although, again, it's a three day dollar time frame. So soon in that time frame is going to mean like a week and a half, probably, something like that. Um, and then also, you know, our four hour dollar time frame, kind of catching a little bit more of that move. And then also the 12 hour gets it as well with this pink 200 simple moving average. Now we are above it. We are above it for the first time in a very long time. The last time that we were above it, that we actually closed uh, some dildos above it was right over here in August on this high right over here. Remember, it gets one more run, which is what we were looking at yesterday and the day before, and I think most of this week, and then gets sold into. And again, another thing that I could say, as soon as Bitcoin actually breaks it to the downside, 
each and every time that we've seen this, uh, big dumps, big fucking dumps, um, especially as it gets, rete and it even gets retested as resistance most of the time as well. So again, I'm in no real rush for that directional trade. In fact, I'm more happy to wait for something like this to add on um, to a real position. Uh, but you have this area right here, you know, it, it gets this more, the, kind of like the last drive is what I think of it as. And uh, you have the same thing right over here on your run to 10,000. And then you have the same thing, well, you don't have the same thing right over here because we are living below it actually. So again, just another thing saying, be aware, be aware of the implications of this sort of thing because because historically speaking, it has not ended too well. Now, of course, the frustrating factor about this guy is that he is actually going to be much lower than the three-day 21 exponential. So that would actually be the more preliminary way of doing this. Uh, but the 12-hour uh, 200 could be a nice uh, supplementary confirmation, I suppose you could say. Um, again, just just sharing my ideas here. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so we looked at that. We looked at that. Let's go look at uh, the longs and shorts right now, which again are very, really fucking scare me. Longs have added. Longs, longs have added, rightfully so, in their own profit. And that is, you know, that is completely fine. 28,400 longs, right? 28,400 longs versus 19,000 uh, open shorts, which I'm actually surprised that more shorts did not get liquidated with about a little under 2,000 of those guys uh, hedged. So we really have like uh, 17 and, a th and three quarters um, open naked. Let's go look at the charts. So on the charts on real time, we can actually see that the real time longs are actually almost approaching that 30,000 number again which is very scary again this is where yes i do know that we had a rally up into this area um coming off the lows but it does historically speaking offer the potential for for major major dumps more more often than not when we get above this area it does it does uh it does line up with major dumps not pumps as what we saw over here in fact we were coming down while it was pumping um but this but the, but 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 most of this being done yesterday uh more importantly the shorts are well and deep into the red box territory which has called perfectly all of the major dumps of the last year. So again, putting everything into confluence with each other, looking at this, we are once again in this area, which is the same area that we got into before 6,000 breaking right here, literally the day before, uh, before the August dump from 8,400 to 6,000 right here, before the May dump from 10,000 to 6,000 right here, and before the double top in, uh, in February right here of 2018. So again, looking at these sorts of things in conflict with each other, looking at the massive, massive, massive differential between the longs and the shorts, the ratio just is in severe favor. I think it's got to be greater than than uh, than 60 to 40 percent uh, in favor of the longs right now. Um, I do want to be, you know, again, in the back of my mind, OK, looking at all these things kind of in conflict with each other what's likely to happen you know what's likely to happen so again um when looking at the longs and shorts it's just it's it's more of a supplementary type thing i don't want to make it sound like it's like the the end all be all but it is very interesting to me that each and every time that we actually have gone down around here for the last year this has been dump central um again it doesn't tell you the timing of this obviously in the late july one uh the shorts were were hanging around this area for literally a couple of weeks it looks like yeah all the way from the from yeah yeah it looks like a couple of weeks actually maybe a little bit more so again we've been in this area for you know about five days but it's on the radar and this is really the big message that i want to have on the fucking radar which is exactly what i'm thinking right now by the way um finex is all the way at 42.58 i mean this finex very likely going to close above the uh, the 200 exponential i mean that is well below now they're 100 bucks above um spot exchange is only about f uh, 50 bucks or so or what, or what is there yeah they're about 30 bucks 30 bucks above it looks like anyways um okay so i think that covers it up for probably most of bitcoin did we look at uh, gbdc gbdc over here what do we have to say about gbdc gbdc did close a long-legged doji on friday however if we when you go down to the lower time frames it's revealed very easily that this is uh this is just kind of flaggy up behavior very ugly this is what you get with disgusting otc bullshit but i mean it's, it's acting as such so again there's going to be a massive gap on gbdc as well gbdc probably going to open up all the way out imagine like around here at around this 526 region um Something like that would, would kind of make sense. So again, you know, understand the understand the implications of what we're doing right now, and the in the areas of interest is is the word that I like to use. So in the meantime, I'm not doing all that much. I, I will be scalping ranges, but I'm not looking for that directional trade until I'm not looking for like the big directional trade until I see the areas that we spoke about before, uh, with particular regard to the three day twenty one exponential because that's going to be the most 
that's going to be the most obvious one um in the high and also you know concurrently the highest time frame but keep in mind that doesn't have to happen anytime soon it doesn't have to happen anytime soon in fact the 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 more time that it takes the higher that that's going to get so it would tell you even sooner so you you know technically speaking you get a better position so right now pretty much my hand my you know uh, my hands are on the are, are in the back of my pants whatever the fuck that is saying it sounds like i'm jacking off or some shit what i'm trying to say is i'm not really doing all that much trading right now uh, i just taken a couple scalps i took a scalp yesterday at uh, at the 200 exponential we had a quick pullback from there it was not it was not the pullback that i'm looking for but again these areas are likely to grind when we're coming up to these you know these these potential turning points um it's not going to you know, it's not going to be a quick wick and then straight down. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe on your actual like final, final drive, but for the most part, the, you know, it's going to look a little bit constructive here as you do see, as you do see this thing, try to consolidate in what looks to be an ascending broadening wedge as of the current moment in time. Um, but only lower time frames are really showing divergences. I mean, it's, it's really only up to a, to a one hour right now, which is not that impressive. I mean, that's, that's not a death signal or anything like that. So again, higher time frames for Bitcoin, um, the 200 exponential, that is the big thing by end of day closure. Do we close above or below the 200 exponential? If we close above, I'm looking straight. Uh, there's There ain't nothing stopping this really from 4,500. You know, it's, I mean, at that point in time, I probably will take a long, uh, I, I won't, I, I probably won't take a long, but I, I would consider it. Um, if we open and close above the 200 exponential, probably going to move into the 4,900 range. But remember, as far as changing the overall macro picture, I need to see both open and close above the 200 exponential. And then my tone drastically, drastically changes. But of course, does that mean that the overall bearish market is over? No, the more traditional way and the most obvious way, although you're probably going to know beforehand, is if Bitcoin gets back above the breakdown point of about 6,000 right here, the, the area that we spent about, you know, a year, a fucking year going sideways around. In the most traditional sense, as soon as Bitcoin gets back above that area, there is no reason to be bearish anymore. Of course, you're probably going to know before. You're probably going to have some great indications beforehand. In fact, I'll show you one right now that, I, uh, that, uh, that I'll be looking at. Of course, this is still well and far away, but the yellow 21 exponential moving average right here is coming in around 5,400. Now, the yellow 21 on the monthly is what I used to use in traditional markets to judge if something was generally bullish or generally bearish. Especially, It works especially well with things that like actually have fucking history, like you know, 10, 20, 30-year chart. Bitcoin has just enough history to actually populate this guy out and, uh, and, and does well with it. You can actually see pretty you know, you can see pretty con uh, concretely that the last time that we actually played this out, as soon as Bitcoin dropped below it, you know, it became resistance and that was your more aggressive bearish market. Once you got back above it, more importantly, that was the end of your, uh, that was the end of your bear market and actually just uh, flipped the switch into the bull market. Now, again, that's coming in all the way at 5,400. We will be coming, we will be having the end of the month in the next four days. Is it a possibility that Bitcoin rallies all the way up to take out this level? I mean, I would actually fucking love that because, because a bull market is just so much more easier, especially for someone who does this as a living. You know, a bear market is when you actually have to work. Uh, you don't you don't need to be a fucking professional trader to make money in a bull market. I mean, you know, it, it might be a little bit of an advantage, but I, I honestly, I don't think that it's I, I, the ex, the extra amount of work required. Probably not even worth it probably not even worth it in a bull market. Uh, it's going to be more, you're going to see a whole different side of this uh, of this channel uh, as I've never actually been streaming during a bull market. I think I began streaming literally last year, uh, somewhere around here. Uh, no, it was March and we are coming up on the one year anniversary pretty damn soon. So I'm really excited about that. Um, anyways, uh, as you can see also with the monthly total coming into mind, there is something very important to be a, a important to be aware of right now as well and actually it's a little bit more of a sombering thing because 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 um what is that the fucking wizard of Oz or some shit uh anyways um because the the 10 simple moving average and the yellow 20 month exponential moving average are 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 they are converging on each other rather rapidly and with bitcoin actually hanging around this green 55 exponential for far too long this is this overall looks like consolidation even on the lower time frames i mean sorry lower time frames meaning mean in a weekly look at the weekly right here let's go actually to bitstamp you can see the volume signature on this still very much that of i mean it's we're we aren't even above the 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 volume moving average right now Yes, there was there was almost a billion done in the last four hour dildo uh, last night. But hey, uh, again, as far as the overall statistics show, this is this is this is the picture at hand. Um, not too impressive, and that also would be you know more in line with this still working as consolidation, especially as long as we're below the two hundred exponential, which we are currently above. Yes, one hundred percent, we are currently above right now. But 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 
if we act if we do close below and we still maintain this as resistance in both opening and closing below well then then this overall in the monthly still is to be interpreted as consolidation and with this interpreted as consolidation being anchored by the green 55 exponential i'd be looking at the at the red tensile moving moving average and the yellow 21 exponential moving average to be kind of like the trigger as as they get closer and closer that does represent that <laughs> if they do cross it's going to intensify a lot of bot and algorithmic selling which if we are consolidating right here after a nice downtrend, that's likely to be bearishly resolved. Now, of course, that also means that Bitcoin could rally all the way up to 4,900 essentially, and that would be considered as a, considered as a test of this cross, and that would be actually per picture perfect if that were to happen to take a position off of. So that's also why I'm now saying, if you do see Bitcoin both open and close a weekly total above the 200 exponential moving average, I actually am, I would be looking for a move to about 4,900 to test this area. That's what I think is, is likely to happen. And, you know, it probably happens sometime, well, obviously next month, uh, maybe not too obviously next month, especially after the price action of the last couple of days. But my point is, is that as long as these moving averages are still situated in the way that they are, and basically as long as we're below the 21 exponential, it's, it, it offers up a bad, a bad setup. And this is just likely to take a long time. Anyways, let's start to get now into the discussion of why I'm overall looking for that next lower high. Why don't why, basically why I don't believe the low is in? Um, why do I not believe that the low is in? Well, all of the things that I look for from a macro perspective on putting in a major mark cycle low are not present for Bitcoin, and that's about f uh, six or seven of those things. So let's actually go over here to Bitstamp. Uh, we'll go to the weekly, and first things first, I want to see major, 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 major volume being thrown down on a major market low. As of the current moment in time, we do not have that. I want to see something more akin to what we did in our parabolic cycle right over here, if it is to be a turning point, as that is, historically speaking, how Bitcoin plays that out. And keep in mind that these volume metrics are measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. So when you see this much higher than this over here, when price action is three to four times higher uh, in, in early 2018, well, that presents a problem because you should naturally be able to do a lot more volume given the coins traded, given the price of the coins over here, but we're just not getting that. Uh, compare that, what I really want to see is, is best represented over here in 2014, 2015 mark cycle. You see this massive spike in volume, very akin to what it did in its parabolic cycle right over here. What it looks to me that we're doing over here is something similar. So we're doing something sim What I think we're doing something similar as is this guy over here in relation to this guy right over here. Now, I don't want to imply that this is a fractal. I fucking hate fractals. I don't believe that fractals. I, I don't use fractals. I don't know anyone successful uses fractals. Again, this is coming from working on the actual floor of the New York Stock Exchange ARCA and then above Chicago Board's Option Exchange being around some of the best traders in the world. Never met a single person who uses fractals who is rich AF that I can verify. Um, but it's gonna fucking look like that, man. And that's the problem with fractals is that people were telling you that that this was a fractal all the way back here. All the way back here, they're saying, okay, this is the fractal going off of this area right here. And then and then it changes a little bit and you say, okay, well, we'll just adjust it. And then, you know, and then it's like, okay, well, this area right here is, is now this area right here. And then it's like, okay, well, now we drop down and now this area right here is now this area right here. And now it actually start to probably agree with that. <laughs> Probably fucking agree with that, to be honest with you. Um, but basically, looking at this, look at the volume of this guy in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Look at the volume on this guy in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Not only that, but look at what got you into this area. It was a nice descending triangle, and the breakdown of that descending triangle took you down about 50, you know, what, what was it, like 53%. Then, uh, uh, coming off the bounce of that, we bounced up uh, in, that, in that scenario about 20, 26%. Not bad. Um, coming over here, we had the same descending triangle leading into, what was it? A 51% drop down. And then we bounced up. And as of current moment in time, we're actually about we're actually about 28%, it looks like. Yeah. So not bad. And hey, what's up? Uh, good to meet you. Who is that? Oh my God. I have no idea how to say that name. But good to meet you, my Russian amigo. Um, and back now over here. So again, sorry about that, man. Not trying to be disrespectful. I just don't know how to pronounce those words. Uh, but hey, man, again, pleasure to meet you, my friend. Um, anyways, so in this area, we have a lot of things. We have a lot of concurrent things happening. In fact, if we even pull up the MVT signal, which has been shown to show, uh, which has been perfect, which has actually been 100% perfect in calling lows for Bitcoin 
um, not always the March cycle low, but usually major lows. I mean, you had the last time that we flashed green was actually in February. So this actually is an example of, of what capitulation can look like. Obviously, it was not the March cycle low. In fact, I would, I would argue that this whole segment over here was uh, what was its own kind of bull or its its own kind of bubble. But anyways, going from top to bottom, we had a 100% bounce from 6,000 to 12,000 in the span of like a week and a half. Um, anyways, as you can see right now, we are nowhere. Well, I shouldn't say that we're nowhere near that bottoming area, but that bottoming area is below 50 and we currently are, we're currently at around 120. <laughs> so it's quite a bit higher. Um, <clears throat> you can see, you know, the past, the past relevancy of it actually calling the low right here on your perfect mark cycle bottom in 2015. And also this bottom right over here and actually the turnaround right before the bull market started. So pretty, so, you know, Perfect, perfect in, in, in hindsight. Um, anyways, what I wanna get onto and what I wanna look at is zoom in onto that area that we were looking at, kind of comparing this area right here, right? And that area right there is represented on this area right here on the MET signal. And in fact, if I actually mark this area off and then scroll over to our current times, we are literally, we were literally right around that area before actually taking off. So do we have something new going on right now? Is that something to consider? Well, look at this higher high right here. I believe that that's probably what we're doing now. Again, yes, it did look like it was doing it over here, but at the end of the day, that was not the scenario. Had to readjust, I was wrong on that. What we are doing right now, though, is we are kind of reaching for this next this next kind of palette of resistance, you could say, uh, with this spike and, and kind of like meeting this you know consolidation. Well, that's exactly where we are right here on the MBT signal. Now, again, if you're not familiar with the MBT signal, it is the network value divided by the daily transaction value and then interpolated using forward back with 90-day smooth moving average, moving average, which, again, just means that it calls tops and bottoms pretty damn well. It's basically like a, it's more of a fundamental indicator. But again, that's one of the reasons also why I do not believe that Bitcoin is bottomed. And we're probably doing something a little bit more similar to that um <clears throat> before you know again putting in lower lows now of course all of this you know I, I could sorry let's actually just get through it first before i start explaining that okay so we talked about the volume we talked about the mbt signal let's we also talked about the bounce right the bounce was done basically about 25 28 percent over the course of now 14 weeks over here and that is just not consistent with the way that Bitcoin puts in major market cycle lows. Remember, the last couple examples of, of uh, capitulation that we actually have were right here. Look at this. In one week, Bitcoin bounced up 50%. 50% is almost double or is, or is basically double of what Bitcoin's done over the course of 14 weeks over here. This was done in one week and really most of it done in the span of like a couple days. Uh, the last, then, then we had capitulation over here, right? And Bitcoin rallied up about, Jesus Christ, about 69% in the span of one week as well. You know, 69% one week versus 25% 14 weeks. That is not fucking good. I mean, it's, it's just not fucking good enough. So again, the reaction is not good enough. The volume is not good enough. The MVT signal is not right. The time spent at the low also not right as well. Look at this. We've spent 14 weeks in this in this area. When Bitcoin puts in major lows, it's a that wick takes you down and you typically don't revisit that wick for quite some time. Now, obviously this one, not a good case of this because it, it was very obviously not the actual low after this after this bull trap right here. Um, but you see that on the initial reaction, that first wick takes you up quite a bit. You don't really revisit that. The second that you revisit that area, it becomes questionable that, 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 uh, that it was gonna be a low. But uh, you see over here in 2014, same similar sort of thing. Bitcoin has a quick wick down, gets picked up, and then never revisits below the lows of these guys. In fact, that is actually a significant amount of area as well. Look at that. That is about almost 40% off the lows that it held. At the current point in time, Bitcoin returned to its lows within about, you know, what was it, like a couple percent, 5%, 6%, something like that. So again, very suspect, extremely suspect. Overall, just another thing that makes when I'm looking for when I'm looking for major market cycle lows just is not consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays out its market its market cycle lows. Um, also, okay, so we talked about the time spent at the low, we talked about the reaction off the low, we talked about the volume at the low, we talked about the MVT signal. Let's talk about now the historical volatility rank, which is one of my favorite ways of actually doing this. And the historical volatility rank, if you're not familiar with it, is an indicator. It's a mean reverting indicator that basically, okay, what's the best way to explain this? It basically it's a mean reverting indicator that that also is between zero and one, and it tells you about the mean about the mean reversions of the standard deviation of of a mean, of an average of price over a period of time. If that makes sense, if I even got that out properly, what I mean to say is though is that when it's at a one, 
it's telling you of a major market inflection point. Like the last few times that we got 201, just to put it in perspective, we're over here on that's on our on our high at 20,000. Then then we did it again at the at the low at 6,000. You did it again on this major on this major high. You did it on again on this major low. You did it again on you did it again on this major high, on this major low as well, on this major high right here, on this major high right here, on this major low right here, which was the last market cycle low. So again, it tells you about those critical inflection points. When it's at a zero, it tells you that the consolidation is is, or it tells you that price action consolidating and it can explode at any given moment in time. As you can see, Bitcoin on the current low got to about a 0.66, which is impressive, but not that impressive and certainly not consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays out its major, major areas to so pull this mic closer. Hopefully the volume is fine. I do apologize about that. I didn't really test it beforehand, but again, just kind of, you know, back test it. It's been perfect in the past with getting these lows, um, the major, major lows. And the fact that we did not even get up above like 0.8 and even flash of color is is concerning it's very concerning again doesn't mean that you can't have a rally in your bear market you certainly can it's, i mean we're fucking having one right now jesus christ but 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 that is also another reason why i'm i'm in look for i'm in, I'm in look for a local high mode rather than um rather than buy the fucking dip mode yeah i mean of course i'm going to go through some i think we already went through the things that i want to see to kind of get into bull market mode but as long as that's not hit this is why i don't believe that the low is in so that is i think five or six things now um the sixth oh, we're so sorry we did volume we did Reaction, we did time, we did historical volatility rank, we did MVT signal. Okay, so five. Let's go over and check out the longs and shorts. Again, this ratio right here, this is very fucking scary. We do not want to see the ratio heavily in favor of longs because when Bitcoin comes up to a major resistance, which we're actually currently at right now at the at the weekly 200 exponential movement average, there are a lot of people holding fucking longs who have already bought in They've already bought in. So one, they can be hunted. Two, there is less power to actually buy in. And three, we haven't taken out any major, we haven't confirmed of any major resistance just yet. We really want to see these the opposite. In fact, when the market cycle gets to the actual low and turns around, I want to see these, I want to see everyone trying to short this area, not trying to long this area. You see it on crypto Twitter. You see it on Reddit. You see it on fucking facebook you see it on someone who texted you who you haven't spoken to in fucking years who's asking about ripple again this is very suspect this is incredibly suspect so again as far as traditional markets go this is not in any way that i typically see major market cycles bottom it's quite literally the opposite so that's number six let's go look at also kind of more in conflict with this factor but again, a secondary, tertiary, maybe even quadruciary type thing would be the crypto fear and greed index, which we are at a 69, which is a great number. We are really fucking greedy, though. Really fucking greedy. Just last, just last week, or, or sorry, just last uh, month, we were extremely fearful, funnily enough. Uh, but this is not only a great number, but it's actually the second highest that this oscillator has ticked in the last year. We are literally ticking higher. People are more greedy right now, more optimist, or more, more optimistic than they were on the highs at 10,000 that got rejected in May. Only we, uh, the only time that people were more optimistic were the double top in February of 2018 at 12,000. Again, people are this optimistic when price action, again, has not taken out a major resistance just yet. I don't see that crazy volume that I'm looking for. This is concerning. This is very concerning. And this, during the past year, has been a phenomenal indicator into basically calling tops as well. Again, again, not calling tops, but letting you know it's on the menu, essentially. Each and every time it's gotten above the 50 mark even, e even the 50 mark, it's called major dumps. Again, this was your double top in February at 12,000. This was your top at 10,000 in May. This was your top at 8,400 in July. This was your top in late September. This was your, this was basically right before 6,000 broke uh, in, in November. And once again, we are actually higher than most of those right now. In fact, only be only beaten by by February of last year, quite literally one year ago. We're like just a little bit less optimistic, actually. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, about five points it looks like. So again, it's it's on the radar and putting all these factors in confluence with each other. That is why I'm thinking the way that I'm thinking now. Of course, I am happy to change my mind 
as I said before, there are three different things that I'm looking for to change my macro perspective on Bitcoin. And I'm happy to change them, but I need to see proof first. I need to see proof first as a trader. As an analyst, analysts can tell you whatever the fuck they, they want and they have no accountability for, uh, accountability for it. That's why you know I, I try to do the things that I way that, uh, in the way that I do. That's why I try to be as, as transparent as possible. Again, to reiterate those things, to completely, t to completely negate everything that I just said, I would want to see Bitcoin both open and close a weekly total above the 200 exponential. That would drastically change my tune on Bitcoin, but not my tune on Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> oh my God, holy shit. Uh, but it wouldn't necessarily be the final factor. In fact, the monthly 21 exponential would be a huge deal to me if we could actually close above the yellow 21 exponential at 5,400. That would be huge, and that would be probably the most important thing to me. And then obviously above 6,000. But I think that you know if you're going to close, but if you're going to close the monthly above uh, above 5,400 above this yellow 21 exponential you're probably going to get it above 6,000. It becomes extreme like, but that would be like the most, 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 most conservative way of doing it. But those are the things that I'm looking for. And I have no rush, no rush at all to be getting in, in, in on those areas. I do not, I mean, yes, I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that some people, the extra, you know, $1,000 or so is worth it. I, to I totally understand that. And, you know, you can scout the ranges beforehand. But for myself as a trader, I'm happy to I'm happy to be in trader mode right now rather than investor mode. I need to see an uptrend. I need to see an up market. I need to see not a fucking bear market. I don't want to be an investor during a bear market when when the asset is still trading down. I understand that that is maybe uh, different than most people's perspectives, but understand my perspective as, you know, as, as basically a trader. And I also look at something called opportunity costs. Remember, if you have your money in an asset that is downtrending, even if even if it is near the actual low, I mean, look at how long it can stay at the actual low. This was over the course of a year at the prior low. Uh, that's dead money. It's it's it as far as opportunity cost goes. I'd rather have it available for something moving. And then when Bitcoin starts moving again over here, yeah, sure, I miss out on a, on on I don't know, like uh, probably like 20, 40 percent, something like that. Let's see. Yeah, about about almost 50 percent. But does it matter when you're when you're likely to do something like that? No, that so that's my perspective on it. Of course, I understand that people have different perspectives, but and that's completely fine. You know, that's completely fine. I'm just sharing mine because I know that uh, it's usually when people have disagreements that they that they just have different perspectives on things. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, anyways, okay, so we checked out all that. Let's go into a little bit more of a forwards look on Mr. Bitcoin right now. Then we'll cover up just very briefly some uh, some shit coins and uh, and let's go on over here to the BLX index. So or sorry. Okay, so as long as Bitcoin is above the 200 simple moon average from a macro perspective, sorry, let's actually get into this conversation. As long as Bitcoin is above the 200 simple moon average right here, this pink moving average on the weekly, it's actually not appropriate to be talking about severe downside targets. However, if and when that does happen, I do immediately look towards the mid 2000s range right here, encompassed by this blue box territory between about 2300 and 2600. That is also where the 886 Fibonacci retracement does does indeed lie from uh, a retracement taken from the from the prior bottom to the prior top of the last market cycle, and that actually is where Bitcoin did bottom out in the last market cycle as well when I took the same sort of Fibonacci retracement. Also around this area, we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around from uh, June of 2017. Also, we do have some major volume profile high value nodes being thrown down in this area. And you can see if we go over to the BLX index, which has enough uh, price action history, we do have the 377 ancient technology weekly moving average coming in right around there as well, 2600. And then the monthly as well, the monthly uh, 89 exponential moving average coming in around 24, 2500. So a lot of things aligning with that area if Bitcoin does break down. And I'm actually not really in the same camp as most of the, as, as like the super bears. And I don't want to be known as a super bear because I'm not going to always be bearish. I'm not gonna always gonna be fucking bearish. I'm gonna I'm gonna be if, if Bitcoin gets above there, I'm gonna be bullish as fuck. I'm gonna be bullish as fuck. So again, um, you know, again, as a trader, I have to be agnostic. More importantly, don't want to get caught in the gains. It's the only game that you end up in is the fucking broke game. Anyways, uh, if the 55 exponential breaks down around here, if I want to make the decision on the monthly, if we actually close the monthly, which still has a chance to close below the uh, the green 55 exponential at 36, what you could call it 3,700 now essentially, uh, then yeah, then I immediately start looking towards the 89 exponential down around here at around 2,500. Um, so again, a lot of things lining with that area. If Bitcoin does break down, of course, I need to see the reaction if um, if if that were to happen. I'm not just going to blindly say that that's going to be the ultimate low. You know, I I actually you know it could have been a possibility that this was a low over here, but as I said, look for all of the things that I look for on a major mark cycle low, I didn't see them. So I so 
that's why that's why tentatively speaking i'm not you know as, as long as those areas aren't hit i'm still going to be uh still going to be having this in my mind down here and if we get the same action down here then i'll go to the next area which would be 1869 and if that doesn't get hit there then then i guess i'll join the super bears down around 1000 uh but understand that this is likely to take a long time this is likely to take a very fucking long time i mean if if you don't think that this can take another year two years three years i mean i'm not i'm not saying it's going to take three years but these there's no time limit, uh, and, and it's probably going to take longer than the last market cycle, which even in the accumulation phase of the last market cycle, it took about a year. And as more and more people uh, become interested in Bitcoin, as more and more people trade this, as there's more liquid money in this, uh, as the market cap grows, it's going to move slower, just naturally speaking. So again, you're going to get less less of these, you're going to get like more prolonged movements, but they're going to be less uh, violent in nature. So Yeah. Alrighty, cool. Okay, so we spoke about that. We spoke about that. Um, let's go over here to the BLX index. Uh, let's talk about this as well. Actually, this is something that I do want to really look at for a second here. Uh, so this is what I call the matrix. Again, this is more. <laughs> this is more something that I do on a on a Sunday because usually I don't have too much to talk about with price action. Although today was certainly quite the opposite. Um, but this is this is interesting nonetheless, and I'll go over right now. Again, not something that I put too much weight on. I would not be making my own trading decisions based off this, but it is it is interesting. So each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a support trend line of a parabolic mark cycle in Bitcoin's history, starting with this first one over here in 2010 and 2011 that uh, anchored in, in both those years, then gets broken in 2012. That becomes the highs, the parabolic highs of the 2013 and 2014 mark cycle right here. Then we create another support trend line for that mark cycle right here, anchored in 2011 and 2012, and that gets broken in 2015. And that becomes the that becomes a governing factor, the highs of our 2017, 2018 mark cycle right here at 20,000. Then we created another another support trend line for, the, for that last parabolic cycle that we saw uh, right here and right here. And that was broken in 2018. And does that become our governing factor going to heads here or, or, or head now? As you can see, it is rising rapidly, but to give you an idea at the current moment in time, it's coming in around 6,000. Now this rises pretty damn rapidly though. I mean, at the end of the year, it's all the way at around, what was it? Uh, about 13,000. But hey, if, if you even go out another year, and this is one of the reasons why I'm a long-term uh, believer in Bitcoin. If you go over to, to 2021 over here, then it's 37th. It's almost 40,000. If you go over to 2022, now what are we now what are we looking at? We're looking at uh, uh, 90,000 almost. Then you know we go out to 2023. It's like what even is this number? It's too many. It's too many digits. It's 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 almost 300,000. So again, um, that is one of the reasons why I'm a believer in Bitcoin. I'm not saying that's going to get to those levels. I'm just saying that that is a potential. You know, it did it did hit these levels at least once on the way up. Uh, so it is interesting to me. It does seem to hold some weight. And more importantly, while we are here, check out these these solid trend lines, these solid descending trend lines right here and right here. The first one is what I'm referring to. This guy right here. This guy right here is akin to this guy right here in both the t between 2014 and 2019, we could say now. And basically, you see, and basically, this this trend line was made off of the parabolic run, which you know, have that first consolidation, it breaks out of that consolidation, and then you put in the nasty bull trap of death and decay all the way down, creating another trend line, which we'll get into in a second. But this first trend line right here, we actually bait while we do break out of it, we never break down below it again. In fact, we base off of it once and then base off of it twice again lower putting in the ultimate low on it so you can see that bitcoin's actually been held up above this guy on the first pass already which does make sense and the second guy the second trend line is actually coming in around where around that 4500 number funnily enough so it does seem to hold some weight and also that is why i would have my eyes on that 4500 number if you know if if, if you do see this weekly close above the 200 exponential and probably going to have a trade there as you do see in 2014 when bitcoin did approach that area it did get quickly rejected you also notice though if and when that trend line got taken out which was over here that was the earliest signal of your bull run so hey, if this if this trend line does get taken out, this this one now that I'm referring to over here, that could be perhaps another big signal. I mean, around the 4,500 level. So does Bitcoin take out 4,500? I think that is I think that is pretty unlikely. I think it's pretty unlikely right now. Um, by the way, Bitcoin's also at the 786 Fibonacci retracement currently, or a little bit below it, as you can see right here. Uh, so a lot of so so some resistance is coming around this area. We got the 786 uh, on the higher time frames. We got the two day 55. And uh, weekly 200 exponential, all, all kind of in the thickness of this, uh, like, I don't know, $80 bunch, you could say. 
Okay, cool. So we covered that. All right, so let's go talk about some shit coins now. Uh, let's just start at the bottom of the list. I got uh, Z Zekel Cash over here, Z Cash. I think they rebranded into something equally silly. Uh, it's like the crypto electric company. It's like, all right, good one, man. Good one. That worked out really well for General Electric. So <laughs> nice one, man. Um, hey, making some making uh, making some higher highs over here. But look at this. In relation to Bitcoin, you're not getting that same movement. It's Bitcoin's making higher highs over this segment over here. Uh, Zcash not not doing the same thing. In fact, Zcash. Well, let's actually get rid of this uh, and this. Jesus Christ, man, that was getting convoluted. Um, Zcash, a, a, a great laggard, which is not a good sign. This is how you can judge relative strength. Look at how they are in relation to Bitcoin. Are they more advanced or falling behind? And we're gonna go through the list right now. Bcash, Zcash, and Bcash. It's like now we need fucking Zcash and then fucking A Cash. And oh my God. Don't get me started on Ncash, the very highly socially unacceptable cryptocurrency. Um, this one breaking out of this trend line as well, but again, not making a higher high over this guy just yet. No higher highs have been made. Uh, volume, on, volume on that last breakout, very fucking lackluster. Tron, I think Tron yesterday, we said, uh, yesterday, Tron, I did say that it was likely to pop back up to the top of the range. It hasn't quite got there just yet. Uh, but this is your big resistance right here, three cents. Tron looks a little bit different on the dollar, on the dollar chart just because... Uh, he had his own run um, for like the beginning of 20, 2019, so he's kind of doing his own thing. I think I, I think Tron's kind of a I, Tron's kind of a wild card. He does his own thing, but overall, what I think Tron's trying to do is fill out this. So I am I'm not necessarily I could be more lenient on Tron. Actually, funnily enough, you know, for all the shit that Tron gets, uh, as as far as the charts go, I mean, it's actually setting up okay. Uh, Neo neo making higher highs not bad not bad but still look at the volume of this kind of suspect and again for neo getting out of the getting out of the grips of a bearish uh, market would be around 15 dollars and 50 cents uh eos very phenomenal reaction as well actually even clear the 200 simple and 200 exponential but still needs to get above you know yes i do have a resistance right here but i'd say i'd say the the big one to really be get is this guy here at about five dollars and uh, ten cents if you can do that don't really have a reason to be bearish and D and very good volume on EOS as well. Actually, one of the better react one of the better reactors. Uh, XRP. Um, this doesn't look right. Why doesn't that? Because uh, I'm looking out on Binance. No, let's go to my uh, yeah, let's go to my Poloniex chart. There we go. Yeah, uh, XRP on on Poloniex, uh, flirting around with the 34 and a half cent range, which is the which is the exact area that I've been speaking about for quite some time. You know, if this area breaks, I I'd be looking for a run to about 30 almost 38 cents. Probably at that time, probably even just make a stab at 40 cents. Um, again, volume pretty lackluster on this. And yes, I know that it trades it trades more under the exchanges, uh, but we can even look at it on Binance and look, it's it's very similar. Uh, a little bit better over here, but still, again, in the overall vein of consolidation. In fact, what did I make this chart on? Was it the three day? Yeah, it was a three day. Look at this. Three day dollar chart, chart actually still filling out um, some sort of a nice triangular uh, consolidation. Uh, let's go look at uh, Monero, Monero Cash over here. Uh, Monero Cash looking okay. Uh, did he make a higher high? I believe he did. That was 57. That was, oh no, he did not. He got close though. So not 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 really, I would say he's like right in the middle of the pack. If we're, uh, if we're judging them, um, let's go look at Stellar Cash. Uh, Stellar Cash all the way at five, uh, nine and a half cents, finally. All right. Um, and uh, I think that this guy probably does try for about 10 cents, uh, just a personal opinion. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Stell Stellar looks like he wants to rally some more. I'd even say maybe even higher than that, maybe even 11 cents. Um, hmm, what else we have? Okay, so I think we covered up all that. Oh, let's get into Mrs. Litecoin, Mrs. Litecoin Cash. Still being beheld in by this rising trend line right here. Look at this. Look at this. Litecoin did make another higher high. Fair enough. And, uh, and we'll have a chance to both open and close above the purple 200 exponential moving average, which it has not been able to do as of yet. But as of the current moment in time, still looks like it wants to respect this... Uh, this this rising channel, rising wedges resistance, which is typically a bearish consolidation pattern. Although you know, again, it's event driven. I'm not really sure how to. I'm not really sure what their event is. Do they do they get some sort of a rebranding? Is it Mimble Wimbles? You know, you never fucking know. But overall, still respecting this area's resistance. I, I want to see where the daily closes. But again, even if this one broke out, I don't. I, I don't think I'd just blindly get bullish off of it. Although weekly looks good. Weekly looks good. Yeah, weekly weekly looks fucking good, man. 
as long as you're above 46, 46 and a half bucks, I think the week looks, looks really good. Uh, and I think it's probably likely to close above there. Uh, let's see, Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buttersworth, did he make another higher high? He did. Yes, he did. He finally has 170 high, testing the weekly 21 exponential formally, testing also this last week from that consolidation phase uh, in, um, uh, what was it, September, October, November. And daily looks healthy with the 200 simple moving average uh, looming right overhead. Uh, that'd be the next big resistance that I'm looking for. Also kind of meeting up with this guy and let's just put on our drawing tools. Uh, we do have perhaps something like this forming, however, so do want to be cognizant of that, similar to what we have on, on Litecoin Cash. Uh, but anywhere around this 182 mark, 182 and a half, uh, I'd be looking for some resistance. But um, again, you know, all of, all of our indicators on this guy, they're getting, they're getting pretty high. They can, stay, they can definitely stay high there. They stayed low there for a long time. They can stay high there, for, uh, there as well. And believe me, I am rooting for this, but I don't think it's likely to happen. I don't think it's likely to happen. But hey, that's why I don't trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis. And if technical analysis tells me to be fucking long, I'll be, I'll be long as fuck. I'll be the longest. Um, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, yeah, as far as Mr. Buterall goes, 210. 210 is the area that I'd be looking for. Um, if it can get above that area, I would probably say no longer appropriate to be overall bearish. Uh, 210 to two. If you want to be super conservative, you'd say 220. All right, so Bitcoin, I see lower time frames probably coming down a little bit. Let's go back on over to him. As we wrap this bitch up, yep, still being beheld in by the 30 minute 10 simple, it looks like. What is the 45 minute saying? We got some bearish divergence on here as well. One, two, three, uh, one, two strikes. Man, not even, not even that strong, actually. Not even that strong. Uh, hourly, you know, hourly, I'm still looking for a move, probably back down. Uh, test the lower side of this range, um, you know, at the very least 41.30 before end of day. But uh, but hey, that's just an opinion. Uh, this I would like if this if 41.30 does act as support, it's going to close above uh, the 200 the 200 exponential on the on the weekly most likely. Um, if you do see a nice bounce over here, if you do see a nice uh, reaction, which we should get con uh, confirmation on relatively soon, I do want to bring up. Oh man, I forgot to bring this up during the whole Bitcoin talk. It's one of the Willy Woo charts, which I actually really like. Uh, I guess I'll quickly just go over it on one, uh, just kind of another reason aligning why I don't believe that Bitcoin's bottomed. And basically, this is Bitcoin valuations. It's it's all sorts of different all, all sorts of different areas. You do see the market the market caps re is uh, is here the realized cap, MBT cap, uh, with different moving averages on them. The uh, the delta cap, average cap, top cap, inflow cap, fees fees cap, all these things. But you don't really need to know. I mean, it's good to understand why, and I want to kind of get through this quickly because I'm getting hungry. Um, but, 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 basically the idea here is that when they converge, market cycle bottoms are called, uh, as you can see right here, as you can see right here. And the, the worrying part right now is that we actually see these in the current moment in time. Whoops. Ah, oh, bastard. Uh, did I do this right? Yeah, okay. Okay, we can do it like this. In the current moment in time, they're not converging on each other. They're actually diverging is what it looks like. So again, this is just another thing that makes me skeptical. It makes me skeptical. By the way, uh, you know the top side of the the, the the top side of this band, which has actually been calling the tops of Bitcoin perfectly for you know its history, is actually coming in right around where? Right, where would that be? That would be right around that uh, that that ninety thousand level that I spoke about um, in a, in a few years. Uh, by the way, the lower band of this guy coming in right around where? Right around that twenty five hundred level that I spoke about earlier, as well as potential bottom as well. So, again, um, just just kind of uh, briefly going through that. I know a little definitely deserves more time, but again, kind of running out of time myself. This video is already fucking long enough, I'm sure. So I do appreciate you sitting through this one. Again, hopefully my mic is loud enough, and uh, and I can't wait to get my camera to work as well because I completely fucked that one up. But you know what? <laughs> Uh, new improvements are on the way. Very much looking forward to that. As always, I want to say massive, massive thank you for joining on in. It's been a pleasure to speak with you on this lovely, beautiful Sunday morning. And I'll be back on tomorrow with some more uh, with some more live stream video action as it is a weekday. Looking forward to seeing you there. If not, well, I want to wish you well anyways and say take care.